here it is, the review that I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for, the uh, Orange Virus Tuner for the 2011 to 2016 Scion TC. Um, as with many of you, I was very skeptical about um, this unit. A lot of people said there's no way you could reflash the factory ECU on a Toyota or a Scion. Um, I've had enough people with the version 1 and version 2 units telling me that they love it. It does exactly what it's supposed to. Uh, this is actually the version 3 unit. I wanted to wait also for some hardware revisions before I finally, you know, drop the money on this thing. Um, this has the version 2 calibrations on it also. Uh, now, for those of you that aren't familiar with what this is, this is a handheld device that lets you reflash the uh, ECU on the Scion TC with more aggressive maps. Um, so they'll have it tuned for for um, more power on. I think I think they do an 87 octane one with stock parts. I'm not sure, but I know they have um, a 91 octane map and a 93 octane map for stock parts. Also, if you have full bolt-ons on your car, being at least an intake header and exhaust. Um, the factory map is not going to really be making good use of those parts, so you can actually reflash a 91 octane and 93 octane map um, that will take advantage of those parts. Um, quick note, uh, I do have the factory mid-pipe on my car. I don't have a full cat back on there, and I did message them, and they said that as long as I have a header on there, um, then that's fine. It'll work fine with a factory mid-pipe. So that's great news, because... I don't want to replace that mid-pipe because it makes the car really loud um, if I go up a size. All right, so let's go ahead and open the box and see what's inside. Oh, before I forget one other thing, uh, it'll also allow you to increase the red line on the car um, to about, I think, 7,000, 72, and 7,400 RPMs were the ones that I've seen. Um, that's a little scary, but... Uh, a lot of the people that actually have this drive automatics and they've been bouncing their red line off like at least 7,200 RPMs without any issues. Um, and of course, I mean, Orange Virus has been tuning TCs with this and they haven't had any issues. But I'm still a little, a little worried about redlining that high. Um, so I'm still waiting for some more input from people about that high rev limit. All right, so let's see what's inside the box. So it's going to show up in a white box like this. Um, it's got a card here. It's going to tell you where to get the software and the instructions um, so that you know how to get the base map off of the car to the unit and then get that off the unit to your computer and then send that over to Orange Virus. Inside the box is the tuner itself. It's a nice modest size. Um, touch screen, good hard plastic on here. Um, oh, th this is actually just a metal plate I added for my magnetic phone mount in the car. Um, so if you look at the top though, you can see there's the uh, mini USB port for connecting it to the computer. And then here's where the plug for the OBD2 connector goes into. Um, at the bottom of the box, you're going to get a USB cable and the OBD2 connection cable. And the only other thing left at the bottom of the box are basically uh, care and safety instructions. Actually, the English side is on here. Now, the, the instructions that you really want, though, are online. So let's go ahead and hop on the computer here, and I'll show you where to grab those instructions from. All right, I'm at ovtuned.com. We're going to want to click on Resources instructions. Uh, you can read all this if you want, but basically go down to the bottom, click on I agree to the terms and conditions, and then the last link here for the OVTune handheld instructions. Uh, this is where you're going to find the link for the software for your computer. This is only for Microsoft Windows. If you have a Mac, you're going to have to get a hold of a computer or borrow someone's computer so that you can do this process. So I've already installed the software on my computer, um, but uh, once you do that, it's going to tell you how to connect the unit to the computer, um, which when you do will update the firmware on here if it's not up to date already, and then how to connect it to your car, get the map, um, and then uh, download it from this to the computer and then email it. So ignore this email address here. The, this is out of date. They do not use this anymore. If you go back to the main page, it says their new one is support at ovtune.zendesk.com. Uh, just send your base tune 
and uh, your order number to that address so you can get on their ticketing system. All right, so let's go ahead. I'll show you the software now real quick. So I have the most current version at the moment, um, which is 1.36.0. Um, it's not going to let you do anything um, with the software until you connect your tuner. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the USB port here. Give it a minute and boom. So now it's connected. It's going to identify the device. Uh, once it's identified, it's going to check online to see if there's any updates for the Orange Virus Tuner software. Uh, if there isn't, then it's going to download it and then have you install it. So it will take a little bit longer. Um, but mine is up to date. So now it's going to download the configuration files from the tuner to the computer. Um, it'll do this every time you connect the unit to the computer, um, assuming that you've closed the software and then reopened it again. If you leave the software open, um, it will connect a lot faster. Uh, once it's done doing that, it's going to download some protocols and then upload them to the tuner, uh, and then you'll be ready to go. So obviously my firmware is up to date. Otherwise, if it's not, it would take a little bit longer, but this is the typical connection time uh, when you first open up the software. Once you're at this screen, you're good to go. Uh, your software on, on uh, your firmware on here is probably up to date. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Close this up and let's go out to the car and grab the factory base map. And underneath of here, I've already pulled open the port to get to the OBD2. We're just going to go ahead and plug this in. All right, great. So, get to the focus. So, we're going to do tuning. So that's already highlighted, so click next. Get, there we go. TC, click next. There's the engine, click next. Key on and confirm. So I'm gonna go ahead and one, two, for key on. And then hit okay. So don't actually start the car when you do this. All right, great. Stock file is missing. Start to read the ECU. Yes. Saving data, please wait. Great. Reading completed. Switch ignition off and disconnect. All right. Oh, wow, that was fast. Uh, the instruction said it could take up to 20 minutes, but that was really quick. Great. So that's it. Let's disconnect it and go back inside. I've already reconnected the tuner to the computer. So we want to grab that base map off of it. So click on download data and then click start. It's going to be very quick. And then uh, you want to name it for your full name, period, and then model of your car. So in my case, it's going to be Derek Aquino.2016 TC. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, and then email that to support at ovtune.zendesk.com, including uh, the order number. All right, so they said it could take 72 hours before you get your map back, especially if you're a new ECU. So I'm just going to have to sit back and, and wait. Uh, I'll come back and show you how to install it once uh, the maps show up in my email. All right, so waiting did suck, but... True to their word, I did get my maps back within 72 hours, uh, which is a single file that I downloaded. Um, I've already reconnected the unit here, so I'm going to select Upload Data. I'm going to browse to my file, which is this one file here. It's about half a meg in size. I'm just going to double click it and click on Yes to Upload. All right, so sit back and wait. Uh, this should only take maybe about a minute from what I understand. Awesome. That wasn't too bad. So now I just have to uh, wait till I get down to empty, throw some 93 octane in the car, and bring this out to the vehicle and flash it. I've already installed the tune on the car, but that original video did not 
turn out as well. So I'm, let me show you the process here in my driveway. But first, let's go over some of the basic settings that you will want to know about. Uh, so setup, calibration. Don't touch that unless you have a stylus, uh, because otherwise you'll have to recalibrate the screen. Language, self-evident. Feature. Uh, so you can change the brightness of the screen here, and you can also rotate it around. Normally, it shows up this way, so the ports are on the top, but because I wanted to have it sitting here on my dash, I flip the screen around. Uh, you go to the Diags, you can click on My Vehicle to get some information on the D on the check engine light codes, and, and I believe reset them there. I haven't had any check engine light codes to actually test that. Vehicle list. Uh, if you have multiple licenses that have multiple cars on your tuner, then I believe it'll just show up here. Um, EOBD will let you do uh, real-time display. Uh, you have to have the, the car on. You don't necessarily need to have the engine on, but the car must at least be on for you to get the screen to load. But you can see um, engine load, fuel trims, mass airflow sensor, um, and all these other settings here. So let's go back and then back and back. So now what you want to know about is actually installing the tune. So click on tuning. It's going to check for the tuning file. It's going to say continue with the writing of the file. When you click yes, it's not actually going to write the file at this point. Uh, that made me a little nervous when I was doing this, but you just click yes. It's going to then load up the different tunes. So, uh, I didn't ask for them to put any specific tunes. This is what they just send it with. So you've got your original file. You've got 91 octane with full bolt-ons um, with the 7,400 RPM rev limiter, 91 octane with stock parts, 93 octane with full bolt-ons at 7,200 RPM rev limiter, uh, 93 octane with stock parts, but at 7,000 um, RPM rev limiter, and then I, I'm assuming they've got a little 87 octane stock part tune on the bottom here. So you can see there's a little asterisk. Oh, well, maybe you can. There's a little asterisk right there. That's because that's the tune that I have installed. So you would just click on here, and then you click next. And it's going to take a little while. Again, you have to make sure the the car is on. So it does take a little while before the progress bar actually starts moving. Um, but once it starts moving, it's going to take about, I think, three minutes. So if you're sitting in a gas station, uh, be prepared to be sitting there for a little while. And done. Writing complete. Switch ignition off and disconnect OV handheld tune. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the car. Uh, you can optionally I'll leave it in if you want to actually do the uh, the real-time readouts, but there's no real reason to have to do that. So disconnect it and then start the car. So there you go. No check engine light. Works great. So I've put about 900 miles on the engine since I flashed the, the new tune. Um, I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Right. That's probably one of the few times I'm gonna take the car up to 7,000 RPMs to accelerate. Um, I still don't really trust running the engine up that high because I don't know if the rockers or the intake or exhaust valve springs can actually support high RPMs like that, but uh, it will definitely raise the rev limiter I'm probably going to continue shifting at 6,400 RPMs, though, just to be on the safe side. Um, I will definitely say I feel more power uh, when I'm accelerating from a stop like I just did. There's definitely more power there. Uh, when I'm on the highway and I'm driving um, and I have to pass someone, there's no need to downshift, really. I just give it a little bit more gas and, and I'm good to go. Uh, I also took the car on a 30-minute long um, back hill, uh, sorry, back road drive up and down hills and twisty roads. and you know, I always felt like I had power uh, when I had to go up the hills. Um, so, I mean, it made that drive really fun. As a bonus, I've also gained about two, two and a half miles to the gallon. I do a lot of 
highway driving, but a lot of it's during rush hour, and then a lot of back roads and a lot of uh, city driving. So I get maybe 25 miles to the gallon, maybe 24 and a half. If I'm lucky, I might get up to 26. Right now, I'm I'm getting around 28 miles to the gallon. So that's that's a nice nice bonus. Um, do I recommend the, the tuner? Yes, I do. I really wish it wasn't as much as it costs. Um, but, you know, it, it's the only one of its kind. No one else has a tuner that lets you reflash the factory ECU. Uh, one last note, though, before I go is I will say uh, someone on Facebook actually mentioned mentioned that they um, well, there is used. Uh, but in order to use it, uh, Orange Virus Tuning is going to charge them around $200 to remarry the tuner to their ECU. Um, so keep that in mind if you decide to purchase it used so that you don't end up spending more money in the long run. Honestly, I would probably just buy it brand new. That way you can be certain that it's you know the, the most current hardware revision. I mean, that's why I waited so long. So I wanted to wait until there was at least uh, one or two hardware revisions. So like I said, I've got the version 3 one on my car. And you know, I'm really glad that I, that I got it. Um, so wait, once I flashed mine though, I like, literally just took it out of the car, stash it somewhere safe. I'm probably not gonna pop it out of the box again unless I really need to um, you know, change the flash down to like 91 octane or, or, or stock. But I don't think I'm gonna have to do that again. All right, um, I hope that if you're thinking about getting the Orange Virus tuner that my video helps you out with that decision. Thanks for watching.